Henry Anderson views the world with different eyes, the eyes of an artist. His rare ability to transform those images into a vision on canvas has made the name Larry Anderson synonymous with artistic excellence. His wildlife artwork is acclaimed across the world, yet Anderson remains true to the roots that started his art career. It was instilled when I was younger, uh, hunting and fishing and being outdoors with my dad. I just, I just loved to be outdoors. So I guess that was unnatural for me to end up painting something like that. Those experiences are evident in Larry's creations. And while his reflection of the outdoors is often a compilation of many locations he has visited over the years, the settings seem familiar to outdoor enthusiasts who just know there's a big buck lurking below the abandoned stand. or that the good fish is always in a bad spot. One of Anderson's most recognizable prints is Larson Farm Pheasants. Originally a commission piece, it was never meant to be printed, but the scene was so identifiable with the outdoor public that it became a bestseller. His name was Bob Larson. It was actually his grandfather's farm, and he grew up there. Well, actually his dad grew up there, but Bob spent all of his summers out there. His grandfather passed away. Um, Bob was afraid the farm was going to get out of the family, so he commissioned me to do a painting of the, of the old farmstead, and he gave that painting to his father for Christmas last year. We ended up making limited edition prints out of it, and it's been a good seller for us. Larry's success is due in part to his rare ability to paint a wide variety of wildlife species in near perfect detail, ranging from big game to delicate songbirds. He believes that growing up in the Midwest and being exposed to wildlife on a daily basis helps separate him from other artists. A lot of the artists don't hunt or fish, and, and uh, you know they're doing all their artwork from photographs. And uh, I don't think they really know when they get finished with a piece if it's right or not. And I grew up around these things, and I know that my buyers are hunters and fishermen and sportsmen. And if they're going to buy it, it better be right. Anderson discovered his artistic talent at an early age, but initially did not pursue a career in art. Instead, he worked in the construction field and kept his painting as a hobby. I was working uh, construction from 6 o'clock in the morning, or mostly sun up to sundown. And I'd go home and grab a sandwich and, and uh, clean up. And lots of times I'd paint clear through the night take another sh shower and go back to work. So uh, I was just burning myself out. I had to make a decision which way to go. And I figured I'd last longer in the art business than climbing rafters. A full-time commitment to art started paying dividends in the late 1970s when his artwork was featured on the covers of leading outdoor publications. Larry Anderson's ability was quickly recognized, and to this day, his paintings and illustrations are in demand by the outdoor press, serving as a staff artist for hunting and fishing magazines. The 1980s found Anderson winning dozens of regional and national awards. He was commissioned by well-known outdoor manufacturers to illustrate everything from catalogs to Christmas cards. The increasing recognition caught Anderson off guard. I guess I'm a little surprised by it, because I didn't expect it. You know, I. I, uh, I worked hard for it, I'm not saying that, but um, I'm pleased by it. You know, I, every time we do a show and if we just sell one piece, I'm happy about it because somebody out there likes it. The growth of conservation organizations such as Ducks Unlimited and Pheasants Forever also contributes to Anderson's success, while the sale of his artwork provides a huge boost to wildlife conservation efforts. Well, I think there's a need to protect the environment and, and the groups that are doing that and putting their money in the right places. Um, I don't mind having my name associated with it or, or them making money off of my pieces. As an artist who is true to the outdoors, Larry has witnessed a part of America's rural heritage slipping away. This prompted him to release a series of prints called Back 40. Well, I, I really don't know how I came up with that idea. I, I just wanted something with the old barns and buildings in it. And, and I come up with the idea of the back 40 because everybody's talking about, you know, let's go out to the back 40 or we're hunting the back 40 or... Um, 
And when I was doing the rough drawings on it, I don't know, 40 just all of a sudden stuck, stuck in my mind, and, and I decided I'd put 40 birds and animals in it. And uh, I don't know, it went crazy. I, I couldn't believe it, it sold out that fast and did as well as it did, and the secondary markets were high on it now. So it's, it, it was a good series for us. Do you ever feel like you're capturing a piece of history and preserving it? Well, I hope so. I, I don't know if I am or not, but I think one of these days those old homesteads are all going to be gone. There's not going to be any of them. I guess that's why I want them. I guess I, that's why I want them on canvas. The Back 40 series is a prime example of what makes Anderson's work so popular. As much time is spent on the detail of the background as the wildlife subjects. I try to do as much as I can. I think uh, I think a lot of artists neglect the background. And in fact, sometimes I, I describe myself as a, a landscape painter rather than a wildlife artist because basically I try to put a lot of a lot of background in my paintings, and and sometimes the wildlife is almost secondary. Anderson's work reveals detail that is often overlooked at first glance. Well, those are just conversation pieces mostly. Uh, we do it to, to entertain a lot of the people at the shows and, and, uh, and people really like it a lot of times when we hide something in there. Uh, it's almost getting to the point now that they're starting to expect it and I don't know if I want to, you know, I don't know if I want that. Uh, a lot of things we'll, we'll point it out to the people if they don't see it and uh, it dazzles them, you know, they like that. While the setting for many of Anderson's pieces are created in his mind, others are memorable sights he has witnessed, like the annual waterfowl migration at DeSoto Bend, Iowa. I had always went over to uh, DeSoto Bend and watched the geese in the fall, and, and so I guess that was just a natural, that had to be painted sometime. Um, it, it just fascinates me to see all the snows and blues in there in the fall, and, and uh, I imagine one of these days I'll do another painting of DeSoto Bend. You know, I like it over there. Years of hunting and exploring the timberland of southern Iowa allow Larry to view wildlife in its most natural setting, as reflected in prints like Winter Cottontail or Watching the Show. I like as much habitat in, in my paintings as I can get. So I try to put some rough places in, in some of my paintings, places uh, real deep back in the woods where those, where those deer or animals are going to be. Anderson's bond with scenes like this are so strong that he will always keep his home in Iowa. Well, I, there's, there's almost everything here. You know, you've got your cornfields and your flat prairie ground and, and a lot of timber. Um, you could do a, a variety of different, different paintings with you know, in different backgrounds, uh, just from what we've got in Iowa. Everyone thinks Iowa is real, real flat and and cornfields and all all agricultural. It's not. Uh, there's some pretty rough ground. I mean, we're we're in some hilly stuff right now. His love for the outdoors extends beyond time walking in the woods. He is just as comfortable on a lake or river. Pretty good sized fish. Or? Paul run his fish out here, and I caught it. About the size of bin catching there. Hmm? About the size of bin catching? Yeah. Looks like that year class did pretty well. They're all kind of little chunks. Another spinnerbait fish. Pretty fish. <laughs> oh, I just missed a strike right in there. You ought to pick it up. It just came oh, right by it. I got him. Got it? All right. What a deal. He hit it real aggressively. <laughs> I think he hit the trailer. I don't think he's much of a fish. But... Oh, I don't know. He's getting serious here. <laughs> he's aggressive. When was the last time you went fishing, Larry? Bass fishing? Yeah. <laughs> it's been a couple years. <laughs> oh, goodness. You do more painting of fish than fishing than yeah. lately. Huh? Not by choice. Yep. Yeah. That's the way it works out, I guess. There's one clear back in the back pole. Yep. Yeah. There was a swirl back. Did you see that right there? 
Does summertime keep you busy with shows and things, or what do you do in the summer? Well, the, uh, the shows are usually early spring and, and uh, fall. Uh -huh. Then in the summertime, I have to do the painting and get everything ready for my shows in the fall. Mm -hmm. Breakfast for a black bass is one print that gives anglers a view of the world underwater. And that was done for the Texas Black Bass Unlimited organization out of Texas. And uh, I think we, they, we did an edition of 1,000 prints, and that sold out like, you know, within six weeks or something, it was gone. The iron-stained lakes of northeast Minnesota were the inspiration for a two-print series. A lot of the northern water has the walleyes and smallmouth both in them. Um, so in, in both pieces, there's like on uh, the walleye piece, there's five walleyes, and the smallmouth, there's five smallmouth, and there's 20 perch in both of them. Uh, the fish are both headed in the opposite direction, so they could be framed and hung together and look good. Striving to expand his artistic horizons and explore new territory, Anderson broadened the scope of his work to include the big game of the Western United States. Prints entitled Mountain Monarch, Rocky Mountain Goat, and Rocky Mountain Muley found immediate acceptance across the country. I've always had a love for the big game, and I really wanted to uh, break into that Western market a little bit. Um, and I didn't think, uh, I really didn't think the pheasants and quail and things like that were, was going to do it. Perhaps the greatest adventure of Larry's life was his first trip to the rugged, remote wilderness of the Yukon. I flew into the Yukon in 89, and uh, I think I spent around 17 days up there on horseback, uh, hunting and taking pictures, and uh, it was a great experience. I couldn't. I couldn't believe that the country, uh, that the, I guess there's still country like that. I thought it'd be more like Montana. I spent a lot of time out west, and I thought it'd be like that, but it's, uh, it's a lot more remote, a lot more desolate and rugged than that. I mean, I didn't know there was any place like that left. And I really liked it, I'm looking forward to going back. The first piece I did in the Yukon series was Yukon Wolves, and that old cabin, was built by Louis Brown, who he, and he was the first white man uh, to take white hunters into the Yukon. Um, and the cabin was pretty beat up, the roof was falling in, but the first day there, we rode by horseback 13 hours to get to that cabin. And there was no place we could stay because it was too beat up. We pitched our tent outside, and it had been raining all day. We put the tarps from the pack horses over the roof, put our supplies inside the roof, and we spent three days there, and I and uh, I liked the old cabin so well that when I did my Yukon Wolves, I I put that cabin in it. And the grizzly bear, when I did that painting, um, that was probably three miles behind that cabin, and all it was was uh, uh, just one scenic spot that I took a picture of there that I that I liked, and I never actually saw the grizzlies there, but I liked that spot. And the sheep, the painting I did for the doll sheep, um, the actual place where I got my sheep is in the background of that painting. And that's, uh, that was just some high, high country pictures I took when I was up there. The black bear, when I did that painting, that was at the lake we flew into. In fact, our plane was tied up right where, right where I did the painting of the black bear. And the next one was a moose, which is uh, Fairchild Lake. We had to go around that lake to get to the cabin. And it was just a little backwater water area that I thought was really nice, and I used it. And the very last one was the caribou, and that was up Ram Creek, clear up high. And, and right, where, uh, right where I took that picture is where I, where I got my caribou. And we had a little fly camp along the river there, and from the well, actually, Ram Creek back to the Bonnet Plume River, um, I think, was 13 hours by horseback. So it was a long way up in there. Anderson's depictions of the majestic beauty of the Yukon have found their way into the homes of not just sportsmen, but art lovers across the world. So many of the sportsmen back, back here and back east, uh, 
go places like that on, on trips every few years, and, uh, and they all relate to it. They're all sportsmen and hunters. You know, if it's something they haven't done now, it's something they want to do in the future. So uh, if they haven't done it, they're thinking about it. Larry Anderson broke new ground with the sportsman's collection. For the first time, he included hunters in his limited edition prints. I got so many comments about uh, uh, my opinions that there should be a hunter right there, there should be somebody in that tree stand or something that I decided. I thought there probably was a market uh, uh, for sporting, sporting scenes like that. And I sat down and did sketches on seven different pieces and, and started my first, or my first, first piece in that series was two years ago. And then this coming January, we'll have our third one out. And they're going real well. We've, uh, we've done a lot better than I expected with it. But I thought there was a market for it, and we just tried it. I kind of got the idea for the sheep hunters from, uh, from being in the Yukon. We had, we'd been there almost a week and hadn't seen a grizzly yet. And one night around the fire, we were sitting around having coffee talking. And uh, I made the comment that there's probably four or five grizzlies in those mountains watching us now since we hadn't seen them. That's really where the idea from that one came from. And the one on the elk hunters is just, uh, I thought, a typical uh, packing out scene with the pack horses. So it's not really, not really anything I've, I've seen or been to, but I just thought it was pretty typical. A total of seven prints will be released in the Sportsman series. Hunters of a different sort make up the rabbit hunters. And Anderson's eye for detail is evident in Coyote Serenade. His rare ability to paint a wide range of wildlife is clearly demonstrated. Despite a yearning to explore new territory, Larry never strays far from his Midwestern heritage. And a bit to his surprise, wildlife scenes such as pheasants and waterfowl are just as popular on the east and west coast as they are in his home territory. As I started doing some shows out west, um, some of our biggest sellers out there are pheasants, and it's simply because there's so many uh, Midwestern transplants out there. Um, I have no problem going to Denver now and doing a show with uh, a lot of pheasant prints because we're going to sell them. Uh, there's very few native uh, uh, Colorado people out there. They're all, they're all from the Midwest or the East. They're all pheasant hunters. They remember doing that as a kid. In fact, more than 600 art dealers in the U.S. and overseas carry his work. One might think that Larry Anderson has reached a plateau, but he says not so. I really don't think I've fully developed my ability yet, because it seems like every time I'm working on a painting, I always learn something new, so I'm still learning. I really haven't developed it yet. In the Four Seasons series, Anderson features the white-tailed deer and the changes that take place during the course of a year. From the newborn fawns in the flowered meadows of summer, to the time of hunting and harvest in fall. Uh, when I did that painting, the, the tree stand in there, I remember a, a, a group of basswoods that the guy had nailed uh, long, I mean six or seven foot, uh, boards across it to use as, as steps to get into the stand and it was just uh, a conglomeration of trees growing out together and he built the stand right in the center of it at the top and I always thought that was kind of neat but that's been I don't know probably eight or nine years ago since I've seen that and I just used it this last fall and the subdued tones that winter brings Larry calls on his memory and imagination to capture each subtle detail. With the demands of the business, Larry doesn't have as much time as he'd like to spend in the wild, sketching, photographing, or just walking and taking in the sights. When he does get out, he tries to absorb it all and refill his reservoir of inspiration as only a day in the outdoors can. I'm always looking. I, my problem is I don't get out enough, so when I am out, uh, I need to take full advantage of it. I thought when I got into business, this is, uh, this is where I'd be spending my time, and I don't get to spend enough time out here. I enjoy the wildlife, and I like being out here. And, and I'd like to try to convey that in, to people on canvas, but it's, it's not always that easy. You know, uh, being out here is, is uh, real, real calm and real peaceful, and it's hard to put that on canvas. It's not like being there, but I try to get as close as I can. One of the unique things about this artist is that he is accessible to the public. 
often attending dozens of art shows each year. And he does more than just greet his fans, he listens. Well, I, I, I guess I enjoy being out and talking to people. And, and oftentimes, by being out there, I, I get a better idea of what the public wants as far as, uh, as artwork, you know. For the pieces we've got on, on display, uh, if there's 30 people looking at one piece, I know that's, you know, if it's a pheasant piece or a deer piece, whatever it is, that's something that the public's into. And oftentimes we'll take an original that I've just finished to a show, and if we get good response to it, that's something that we consider printing. By the time I get through with an original, the amount of time it takes me to do one, oftentimes I don't know if it's a good piece or a bad piece, and it's, it's good for me to get some reaction from the public from that. And with the opening of the studio of Larry Anderson, the art and the artist now are more accessible than ever. Larry Anderson decided to open his own gallery because there was not a location where customers could see a wide range of his work. During a visit to the gallery, you'll find that Larry's artistic talent extends far beyond the painting to the matting and framing, which Larry believes is an art in itself. You almost have to have a little art ability uh, to choose the colors, you know, to enhance the print. A frame job will make or destroy a piece. You, know, if, uh, you can have the same piece set side by side and a real nice frame job on one and complementary colors, everything and have a bad, bad one right beside it and it won't look like the same piece. Anderson remains very much in demand as a commission artist. A project for the Pepsi Cola Company is keeping him busy, not just with the painting, but with the research. Over the course of several weeks, Larry completed the first print in the series. And what they want is a, a nostalgic, a, more of a nostalgic look. And so we're going to have old Model A's and, and uh, this particular quilt piece I'm working on, that's, that's a 1932 sign that uh, Pepsi-Cola went, when they went from a nickel bottle to a 10 cent bottle, uh, that's the sign they started out their promotion with. And so basically this, uh, this painting's got to be in the 1930, you know, 32 to 35 era. And we'll have an old Model A delivery truck uh, with a white tail back in the background watching. Uh, one of them's going to be an old time covered gas station with a, uh, probably an old Chevy in there with some Pepsi signs around and some pheasants in the ditch. And it's, it's kind of fun researching it. It's just something new and different for me. I've been to the library. I've talked to a lot of, the, uh, a lot of people I know. Um, some of the people at Pepsi have been searching and calling people and getting old books and, and photographs and everything else for me. So um, getting that piece started was, I almost had as much time in it as, as I'm actually going to have painting it. Larry recently completed a commission follow-up to Larson Farm Pheasants. Minnewaska waterfowl depicts life on a northeast Minnesota lake. Like much of his work, people already have commented that the painting looks like a lake with which they're familiar. An ambitious project that promises to keep Larry in the studio painting is the North American Waterfowl Series. Well, that's part of a collection of prints that we're doing. We're actually doing 12 in that series. The first one was September Mallards. Uh, the one we just came out with was October Blue Wings. Um, next year will be November Blue Bills and so on. We're going to have actually each month with a different waterfowl. And included in those paintings, we're introducing another animal into it somewhere. The first one had a white tail coming down to drink. Uh, the blue wings have a, has a squirrel coming down the tree. And we'll have another, another animal or bird in each one of them. Larry's distinctive style shines through again in the Daybreak series. The animals in the prints are cast in the glow of the early morning light. Lighting in each one of those paintings is real, real stark. Uh, there's a lot of contrast between the animals and the background. And uh, we very seldom show that to somebody that's interested in it that doesn't buy it. You know, it's, it's been real, real good for us. And the pheasants are going to be the same way. The people that have seen the pheasants while I was working on it uh, signed up for the series. The popularity of Larry's work extends beyond the canvas to a variety of art-related products. T-shirts and sweatshirts featuring the art of Larry Anderson sell as fast as they can be printed. We started out printing a black and white shirt and evolved to uh, 
like an eight color shirt and now we're doing four color process shirts. And, um, and I guess it was just the, uh, the idea come from seeing so many people wearing wildlife shirts and I was just approached to do it and, and we did it. It's been good. Uh, we can't hardly keep them in stock, you know, as, as fast as we print them they go out. So uh, I guess again I'm a little surprised by that too because I didn't expect them to sell like that. The art of Larry Anderson is also finding its way onto calendars, jewelry boxes, and beer steins. But painting remains Larry's passion, his love for the outdoors, and desire to capture the old machine sheds and rusting machinery that one might see during a drive in the country led him to start the Rural Series. About anyone that gets off of a main road and gets on an old back road somewhere is going to run across things like that. As for what the future holds, well, Larry would like to spend more time in the studio painting, more time enjoying the outdoors, and more time with his family. He also dreams of traveling to Africa. No, well, I've got lots of things to do yet. Um, I hope my painting keeps improving. Um, there's lots of places I haven't been, and, and someday I'd like to go to Africa and paint something. So I've got lots of things I want to do yet. I don't want to paint anything any African game until I actually get it, get there and see it and, and feel comfortable with it. I think a lot of artists paint uh, that are painting African game have never been to Africa, so consequently uh, they're not good pieces. They should be painting what they're familiar with. Reflecting on his career, Larry says he would do it all over again if he had the chance. And while the sale of his paintings may seem like the ultimate reward, Larry says it's the friends he has made who have made it all worthwhile. I'd say it was hard work. And, and the reward for that was the enjoyment of the nice people I've met. Larry Anderson, seeing the world through an artist's eyes and giving it a signature of distinction.